So I've got to go and see if this bracket has been generated. Carvey Boomer. It has. Okay. Do you see anybody you know? We've got Proddy in here. He just resubbed today. Hey, it's Leo as well. Also, just resubbed today. Sorry if somebody else in here resubbed and I don't notice uh, at the moment. I don't see any pros. Okay. This one might be wide open for the plebs to dominate. Okay, here we go. The the games have begun. Let's, shall we start at the bottom today? Chronic missed out. Ah. Oh. oh, well. You don't get to see Zero Boost Chronic Carvey Boomer tournament today, but maybe another day. Hey, maybe. If, I mean, if this is really good, then we're definitely doing another day. Okay, here we go. The first goal of the tournament. I'm going to really quickly put the volume on. And it's just bounced it off the back wall. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta watch out for that. That can happen. You need to watch out for that, Brian. Like, usually, the ball would be in quite a safe location there. Um, but with these particular mutator settings, which involve the curve beach ball setting. Oh, that's a good shot. Oh, that's almost a brilliant shot. You better be careful. Though. That ball ain't coming down for a while. But Bailey's got some air roll techniques here. <laughs> he tries to wave dash, but you can't wave dash with low gravity. Well, not by jumping off the floor. Well, you can wave time. dash, but not by jumping up off the ground because your car's just not going to land in time. <laughs> your dodge is gone. It's wide open. Bailey trying to wave dash again. You can't do it. It's, there's not enough time. <laughs> yeah, it's no boost boomer. We've tried, We've done this uh, tournament mode before in, uh, in the stream. Oh wow, what a landing. Oh, he's actually, <laughs> what a move, what? Oh my days, has he curved it in as well? Get out of here, oh my goodness. Brownie, with a five million IQ play. How has he done this? <laughs> Honestly, I'm more impressed with the dribble move. The dribble was insane. He landed on the ball, kind of bobbled onto the floor and then perfectly mind game Bailey to miss it. And not gonna lie. It looked like, what a kickoff! Oh, Brownie with a crash landing. It looked like Bailey had quite a big mechanical advantage in that like previous portion of play, but somehow Brownie has come back and made a real game out of it. Bailey's fallen over. Where's the cue ball going? Okay, it's going out for a throw and it's fine. Or at least, fine for Bailey. These guys are really going for it. Like, they're gonna take a while to figure out the, the bounce of this ball, but they're going to take even longer to figure out how to shoot with it. Oh, that's impressive. Okay, Brownie. Hitting the right side of the ball there in order to get it moving towards the goal. It's time to dodge ever so slightly, but Bailey not able to punish just yet. That's far too much backspin. It's going to be safe. Or is it? Hold on. Brownie's missed the takeoff. I need a player able to punish. I'll tell you what, so far I'm very much enjoying the no boost variation of Carvey Boomer beach ball, whatever you want to call this, uh, compared to the unlimited boost version where people were literally ball chasing for the entire game. Bear in mind, it's first to three wins, as in first to three goals wins the game, not first to three games wins. And that is going to be a goal for Bailey. Nice little air roll. To secure the angle. Well, that center ball was pretty good as well. The way that it bounced across made it possible for him to catch up to it. Um, by the way, chicken box, thanks to the 11 month tier one. Miss sending up to get clapped in the attorney. Hey, next time. If this uh, continues to be as entertaining as it has been so far, I could absolutely see myself running this again. Like, There's just something about these uh, these curveball tourneys that are just so funny to watch. Oh no. Not like this. Not like this if you're Bailey. Now, even though it's first to three, I've said this uh, in every single one of these tournaments that I've ran, but even though it's first to three, if you do have the lead, when the clock gets zero, you win. And that is a complete whiff on the ball from Brownie. Bailey trying to slow-mo dribble it in, and he's done well. Curves it on target straight down the middle. And that'll be round two for Bailey. Well, well played, Bailey, mate. Excellent finish, actually. To curve that one on target was not as easy as it looks into round two. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll save a replay here because we need to get at least one replay from the tournament. Seven rounds in this one. Bailey for, with 212 ping. Where, Bailey, where on earth are you from? 212 ping to the US East server. That's an interesting amount. Who gets 212 ping to US East? Is it South America? No. 
Is this America? Could it be? No. Surely not. OCE? Nah. Do USC East OCE must get more? Do they not get more? Really? OCE gets 212 points to US East? I thought they would get more. Well, I'm glad I asked. I'm glad I asked. Because... Oh, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I guess that does make sense. It's called having bad Wi-Fi. No, I, I mean, I thought the ping would be worse from uh, US or from OCE to um, US East. That's better than I expected, right? Let's get into uh, Panera Employee versus Fiends Fiends. Fiends versus Panera. You just won round one pog. That is a big pog. Okay, looks like a goal just happened. What on earth are these team colors? Oh my goodness. This one in... It, <laughs> This one in particular has caught my eye. That is an extremely green username. Very green. I love the the fact that even if you turn boost off, everybody just drives over the big boost pads anyway. Good practice to do so. You've got to be careful at any moment. The ball could be moving pretty quickly towards your net. You don't want to get too close for comfort because, yes, it's unlikely that the opposing player is going to get it moving that quick from a standstill, but... Neither are you going to get your car moving very quickly for a standstill. Be reminded that I do have super fast max ball speed on today. Oh, that's just a near post walk-in. And Fiends is lost to let it happen. I don't know what, uh, what he was thinking here. Oh, he tried to wave dash. He's also, he made the same mistake that Bailey made in the last game. He tried to wave dash into position at the near post so he could then dodge into the ball. But with low gravity, you can't even be doing that, right? Wide open net for Fiends. And he sent it wide. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now, we figured out after the last tournament that the most reliable way to score those is actually to hit it off target. But, you know, hit the corner of the ball so that it spins on target. Or at least that seemed to be my most reliable way to score. But it's going to take a while, like I said in the previous game, for everybody to figure out exactly how to hit the ball in this game mode. I, like, I love the, the fact that we've removed boost from the equation has made everybody no less likely to jump off the wall at the highest possible location at every given opportunity. Fiends, is he gonna, again, we've got another wall shot attempt from Panera. Complete fail. But Fiends, he sent the ball <laughs> actually in the, in the general direction of the moon. You know, you usually say that as a joke, but I believe that the moon is in fact up there for Manfield Knight. Similarly accurate shot from Panera employee. He's already got the two goal lead. Bit of pressure here. Clock's going to win the game for him in a minute if he doesn't get the winning goal himself. Fiends has struggled. Backspin, keeping the ball in the air. Oh, he does get something on target, but Panera's there. Looking very confident for the boy in green to advance here. What will happen if two teams who are the exact same color get in? Oh, you've got a, way, a home and away strip, don't you, actually? Now that I think about it. Is it possible to make home and away strips that look identical, though? Look at this. Ceiling shot with no boost and a curvy ball. Panera also struggling to hit those open nets. Fiends can't get the ball out of his half, but he might not have to. Panera's almost put it in his own goal. He got caught on the wrong end of that one. But it's gone wide, and unless he concedes two in ten seconds, he will be moving on to round three. That is where he's headed. Because he has taken 2-0 game here. Unless this one finds its way into the goal in zero seconds, which it very much looks like it would. And GG, goodbye to Fiends. Panera employee advances to round three. We've got a sign it. Moving onwards and upwards. Another American. Oh, another uh, Australian, perhaps. If you guys are correct. All right, let's see uh, if we can find a round three game. If there's no round three games available, we'll just watch another round two while we wait. Uh, looks like there aren't any rounds. Yeah, there's no round. No round three games. So we'll get into this nil-nil round two between Beanbag Bro and I didn't catch the other name. Who is it? Beanbag Bro and Blazing Korea. They have gone four minutes without scoring. Beanbag Bro is in the offense. He's got the bump and the mind game. But what a pre-jump. Blazing Korea on and the ball's done him a big favor here by going much higher than Beanbag Bro expected. 
As it bounced clear, beanbag with a quick turnaround. It's not a bad shot to the net, but it's gone wide. That's his opportunity. He's trying to line up another one. Beats him to the ball. Hey, look at that. Is it going in? Oh, it's off the far post. Beanbag, bro. Not shy for the camera. Under massive pressure here. You know, if he'd had to watch that bounce off the post and go wide, I'm sure he would have been seeing a megalol when he's trying to get his sleep at night. But with 22 seconds left, he has taken the one goal lead, and that's all you need here. You don't need the three goals to win it. You can advance with less. As you saw in the previous round. Hey, <laughs> hey it's Gav. Thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the three points. 22 donation. Oh, okay, calm yourselves. <laughs> that's almost a late equalizer there. Bag bro nearly beamed it. it. Looks like Blazing Coran's given up. He has no faith in himself scoring from this spot. And neither do I because that is going to be it enough for Beanbag Bro to advance. Love the name. Good luck in the third round of the tournament. Hopefully that's where we're going to be heading as well because I think most of the round two games should be finishing around about now. Do I think that could be the way to head glitching uh, for the two-month prime? I don't think I did and that was 11 minutes ago so hopefully you're still here. Apologies if you're not. Tell you what, we'll hop into Prodi versus Hayes Leo. Because it was a draw on the bracket. Maybe it's gone into overtime. Has it, actually? Okay. Oh, it's a 2 2 golden goal situation here. And we might see overtime yet. Prodi. Aggression. In his opponent's half. Is he really going to jump off for this? That's wild. And it might have just thrown away the game. Hayes Leo has. Made it pretty obvious. Come on, Hazley. That was way too obvious that we scripted overtime here. Gotta at least try to put it on target. Huge thumper from Prodi as the ball almost reaches the halfway line in at least two seconds. Doofy, how's it going? Thanks for the tier 3 17 months. How are you doing, my man? It's good to see you. Now, we've got 12 seconds left in the game. It wasn't the blue end, and that was a bit risky, but still. All good for Prodi. It's gone for the pinch. Now it's bounced off the wrong way. Stays close to the wall. Yes, Leo needed to be careful at the near post there. Didn't want to let that roll across and spin into the goal. Overtime. For round two. It's a Carvey Boomer tournament. I still haven't come up with a good name for this. Somebody please help me out here. Come up with a name for this game mode. Maybe we'll have to come up with a unique name for the no boost variation. Or would you just call it no boost boomer? You know when you when you say boomer mode in, in Rocket League, people think pinball basically, uh, or, or you know pinball without the small ball. Uh, they just think normal ball, but it moves very fast. So Got to gotta change up the name a little bit, I guess. No bump coming in for his Leo. He can't really make those plays with no boost. But hold on a second, that's almost spun in for Prodi. Oh, it's off the post and both players miss the ball. After the rebound, it was extremely close to carving on target as well. You're working on your new montage. Should be out soon. That's awesome, man. Keep it up. No boost, big brain boomer. Oh, I like that. Big brain boomer. I'll tell you what, who's got the bigger brain here is Prodi. Because that is a perfect interception. And that is a 3-2 win. Hey, it's Leo. Didn't think Prodi was going to move in on that one. He thought he had a bit more time. But it has rolled perfectly into the bottom corner. And into round three goes Prodi hits Leo. Tips out in round two. Great, uh, great game there. I love the ones that go close in the bracket. And then you join and it is close. It's so disappointing when there's a close game in the bracket. And then you join it and it's 2-0. Like this. 2-0. Nobody wants to see 2-0. Unless, of course, there's a comeback on the cards. Right, none of these games are draws. Okay, there's one. AN Dubs versus Emil. Please do another one after with unlimited boost. Absolutely no. We already did this game mode with unlimited boost last time I streamed a tournament of it. And uh, it was actually really boring. It was very, very boring. Is that an open net for AN Dubs? I think it is. Oh, no, actually. That is a very nice long shot. I thought maybe you just dribbled it in, but look at that. He just spun it into the bottom left corner. Beautiful finish. And he beat his opponent to the ball to do that as well. Here's Leo literally shacking right now. I don't blame you. I mean, that was a pretty tense situation without me being present. I imagine that the Johnny boys joined the lobby. Made it ten times worse. 
Whatever that's like, you're just like casually playing a Wii tournament. And all of a sudden a stream is watching. Out of nowhere. That was already 2 all. You lost due to lagging out. Oh, that's unfortunate, man. Hey, at least we got to see you on stream, though. It's a cracking game. Emil's got to hurry up here. Kidding. Surprise and dubs at the bottom corner. You know, there was a bunch of spin on the shot. Hesitation from Emil's. Let's. And dubs beat him to the ball. And dubs slightly all over the place, though. That's going to be rolling towards the goal. Now, how quickly is it going to get there? I don't think it's going to be quick enough. And dubs a couple of dodges. Gets back into his defensive position. He's just got to hold on for 10 more seconds. It's one of those times where you kind of have to go for the wall shot. And it might not be a bad idea. Oh, it spun into the bar. Cracking effort from Emil's. Or Emil's. I just realized it's probably better to say it like that. He's not giving up just yet. It's going to be a very tricky one from this position. Because he just don't have the boost to ever reach the ball and make consecutive touches. He's trying his best. You know. Dubs might have actually helped him here. I don't know if... Emils is going to reach it. And Dubs doesn't really have to do much here. As long as he doesn't take himself out of the game, he's going to be fine. He just needs to keep pressuring the ball. And eventually it should hit the ground. That might be it. It's spinning, spinning low, and it is going to hit the floor. But take note of that shot that we saw from Emils that nearly tied up the game. It was uh, coming out of the goal with a lot of backspin. And even though it initially looked like it was going to bounce on the ground before the line, because it had so much backspin, it actually lifted up into the crossbar. Uh, just a bit more good fortune. You never know. Maybe that goes in. But it's definitely a good idea to clear the ball like that. I've tried it in um, a private lobby with these mutator settings before. Just hitting the ball into the sidewall so it curves up off the ceiling, bounces down with backspin. Because then it's going to come towards the goal with a very, very difficult to read trajectory. Especially when you've played as much Rocket League as these guys have. You're just not used to seeing the ball float this much. You move into position too far forward. Some heavy hits early on. Dr. Fiax is waiting patiently for M squared to give him the ball. There's the center, but he's hit it the wrong way. If he'd carved that to the left, that would have been a very nice finish, in fact. It's easier said than done. This quick moving ball it gets a bit too low of a contact on this one. The pressure there. Fake challenge from Dr. Fiax. I like that. He's keeping up the pressure. He doesn't have to do anything here. He's trying to force the misplay out of his opponent. Again, fakes a challenge. Turns around. Gets the open net. And he puts it in. This is a really good uh, pressure from Dr. Fiax. See that? He just drives in. Forces the jump from his opponent. Just for the threat of him being there. He did that twice in that play. I really like that. Especially when you know your opponent has no boost. They're going to have a harder time, number one, dodging into the ball in the first place. But number two, getting it clear while doing so. But oh, nice little finish at the back post by M squared. And this all came from the awkward bounce in the back wall. See that backspin? It got Dr. Fiax moving too far forward on this goal line. And then suddenly he's out of position and the ball's over his head complete new learning curve for everybody in this tournament. Interesting kickoff there for M squared. Dodging late so that he can get a contact in the ball at the end of his dodge. Might try to do so again here. Great spin. Not enough power. It's going to be another turning down. This will be the only one we do today. Uh, oh, dodge times out for M squared. Jumping unable to punish with the cross map. Open net. Lots of fake challenges from him though. You know, if he can start hitting the ball just a tiny bit higher on the hitbox, these shots are going to be very scary for uh, M squared to deal with. So even if they're not on target, you'll always be thinking, is it spinning in? Is that actually going in? And I don't even know it yet. More likely to make mistakes. More likely to mess things up. So there's the fabled wave dash. You can't get them much to jump it off the ground here. Look at this floating dribble from M squared just driving underneath the ball as it makes its way down the other end of the field. Uh, by the way, CactusMan236, thanks to the Prime sub. I got a bit distracted there. That was six minutes ago, but I appreciate you, man. M squared. Leans up the defense. It's quick to counter as well, but it's off target. A couple of shots, actually, from 
both players this game have gone pain painfully wide. This could be dangerous. Dr. Fiax, luckily for him, the ball didn't drop in front of the goal there, but if it did, I don't think he was in position to deal with it. This is one of his best chances yet, though. And it's a great save by M squared. Dr. Fiax faked a shot across the goal, spun it top right corner. This one goes top left, and that's some cracking shooting. You know, I said earlier, if he gets a bit higher up in the ball, stops hitting it on the bottom, these shots are going to be very difficult to deal with. Well, look at that. It's straight in the middle, and he spins it perfectly into the left side of the goal. That is a beautiful goal. Great finish. As we are still in round three, we're already seeing some very calculated and deliberate plays. More placement, more thought being put into plays than we did in the previous tournament that we did with Unlimited boost, this game mode. The backspin, fools M squared. That could be the game. Dr. Fiax puts it in. And it's another game where backspin has played a huge part. M squared panicked when he messed up initially, dodged the wrong way, made matters worse for himself. But clinical stuff from Dr. Fiax has some really good shooting at the end of the game. Looking forward to seeing more if we do get to watch any of his matches later on in the tournament. I'll try to find some uh, fresh faces, of course, like I usually do. Um, well, I'll try and find some fresh faces with, with a 0-0 zero, zero score. We already saw Beanbag Bro play once this tournament. Um, I think we're... Okay, there we go. M-Dog versus Benji. 1-1. One, one. This should be good. You felt that pressure? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I had to watch. It was a great game, though. Good finish. Must be happy with yourself, right? It's 2-1 now. M-Dog ahead of Benji. Let's see what we've got in store for us here. It's another very awkward center ball. Both players struggling to read it. M-Dog lining up a big clear. He had some pretty menacing intentions with that spin. I love that the players, even this early in the tournament, are really thinking about how they're hitting the ball. They're thinking about getting the most out of every single touch. And M-Dog will get the most out of this one. He's just gone on one. 3 1 inside half time. We've not seen that too often. Benji was completely under the ball. Not much he could do there. Just want to remind you guys, by the way, I've turned off the chat. Chat is disabled. I suppose I could make it um, quick chat. But yeah, I turned off uh, the chat because I don't want to you know, risk some random, I don't know, saying something weird. Um, but yeah, I'll turn on quick chat because, yeah, the. the there very well could have been a GG there, but we just didn't see it because I turned the chat off. Oh, another 1-1. One, one. Okay, Dayton versus Pigeon. Oh, I misclicked. Let's hop into this. Okay. Pigeon. Double jump commit for that ball. No pinch clear from Dayton. Just faked it, and look at that. Trying to curve the ball on target around his opponent. Has he gone too far out of position though for this one? Pigeon fakes an aerial with no boost. I don't know if that's likely to work. Um, pretty key bump actually there. And another one. Great recovery out of there from Dayton. Giving himself a chance at a relatively open net here. I say relatively because if you do put a shot on target from that position, it's going to be very difficult to save. Pigeon wide the cross map open air. More great aggression from Dayton. He's getting underneath Pigeon and disrupting his landing every time he can here. Fortunately, he catches the ball on the wrong side. He's going to spin harmlessly into the far corner. Still 1 1. Scoreline matching the bracket score. What kind of speeds are available in Scotland? Internet. Okay. Internet speeds. I don't know actually. Um. Not entirely sure. I mean, I know you can get 500, 500, but uh, for houses, not sure. You probably can get if you can get 500, 500 for businesses. You can probably get it for houses as well. But yeah, my internet's fine. I don't remember what it is, but it's fine <laughs> usually. And that's another open net and another shot spinning the wrong way. It's a very, very small margin for error there. I mean, you might be looking at that shot. Oh, there it is. Look at that. The backspin. Well dealt with by Dayton, but that is a really difficult shot to read. You've got to catch it early before it starts to spin away from you. There you go. That time Pigeon does clip the ball on the right side. 
so it'll spin the way that he's trying to make it spin. But like I was saying, it's a very small margin of error. It's either that's wrong from Dayton. He just hits it on the wrong edge. <laughs> Thanks, he says. He's getting bumped away. We're going to see a 10-second winner. No, it spins wide from Pigeon. Pretty sure he shot that one off target to one side of the goal, and it's spun all the way to the other. Off the ceiling we go. And into the ground for overtime. I think if my memory serves me well, this is still round three. Very close games, very good matchups so far. No player looking too dominant. I don't think any of the people we've seen so far. No, we've not seen enough of anyone to say with confidence that they could win the whole thing. That's a very, very big commitment to the ball from Pigeon. But Dayton is not... Had any confidence at all with this shot there, has he? He's just chipped it. I would have loved to see him really go for that one. Just like Pigeon there, actually dodging into the ball. You might, you might miss, yeah, but why not give it your best shot? It's a wide open net. Of course the curve makes it challenging, but that is how you're going to win tournaments like this. You're not going to win it by sitting back and waiting for mistakes 100% of the time. When you're presented with an opportunity, you've got to at least try to take it. Now, here's Pigeon. He's one of his own. He's spun the ball the wrong way. Do I know he's turned this on Twitter? I believe I tweeted before this uh, stream. Notice there what Pigeon's doing. He's chipping the ball into the ceiling because when it bounces off the ceiling, it comes away with backspin. And that's going to make it harder to read. Like I've been talking about all day. Anytime you can chip it up and into the ceiling like that. Oh, that's awkward, but well dealt with. Pigeon sets the ball into his own bar to get it to safety. He's way off his goal line here, though. Realizes a mistake, gets back into it. He's got a favorable 50-50 and a potentially free shot here. And that one is spinning in a better direction. It's gone past Dayton. He very fortunately lands on the back wall in position because that could have been disastrous for him. Pigeon turns too early. It wasn't a mechanical problem there. It was purely the read that was off. Again, Pigeon. Just a tiny bit out of position for a lot of these turns because he doesn't know exactly how far the ball is likely to go. A new Twitter channel in the Discord, by the way. Okay. Nice wave dash. As Pigeon jumped off the wall, but Dayton, not for the first time this game. Matches him for speed when they both dive in for the shot. Pigeon makes contact, but not the best contact. In fact, he gives it straight to Dayton to win it all. You know, good fake challenge, though, by Dayton. He's won the game with that fake challenge, or rather that fake shot. He even drops a sorry as well just to rub salt in the wound. Now, there's the GGs, of course. And Dayton moves on to round four. We've actually seen... Huge success from uh, fake challenges in this game mode. I think the fact that nobody has boost makes it much harder for people to read like when a challenge is real or not. And you also have to commit so much earlier. When you don't have boost, you got to decide, okay, am I going to dodge now and maybe clip the ball at the end of the dodge? If you don't, then you're just going to have to watch it go past you. Very big risk there by Beanbag Pro. A lot of luck today. Every time we take a look at a score on the bracket, we join a game and it's pretty much that. Beanbag Pro. And big, sad, not so juicy um, Rally. AKA Rally. Is it Justin who started doing this? This old juicy memes. Or did somebody else do that? I, I'm not really keeping up with. Uh, social media enough to know that's a genuine question turbo turbo did it awkward position for beanbag bro but he's done pretty well here in fact he's baited in rally now rally's got some defending to do but what kind of bounce are we gonna get one that beanbag bro fancies his chances with and tell really what he's got rally all over the place in defense here there's a lot to think about when you're uh, defending a hard clear in this game mode. It's not as simple as, oh well, it's hitting the back wall. That's fine. you got to think, okay, is it actually spinning into my goal? Is it going to 
Bounce back into the middle. Oh, that one is. The beanbag bro. Tries to snipe, but look at the curve shot. To the bottom corner. He absolutely nails it. The bounce got past Rally. And beanbag bro just sneaks it in there. That was beautiful. I thought he'd been there. I thought he had done his namesake and hit it off the post. But he struck it perfectly and he's only got to defend for another few seconds. And he'll have the win here. Good challenge. That should be the game. And Beanbag Bro clutches it into the final eight. Um, I believe it. Yeah, into the final eight he goes. Another great game. We're seeing so many close games today. Type, uh, type one in the chat if you were here for the... The unlimited booster version of this tournament that we did. You can expect to thanks for gifting a sub to Dry House for his third month in a row. How you did, Dry House? And Fai Kung as well, thanks to the tier one. Welcome. Really appreciate you, man. Okay, all the people who saw the unlimited boost version of this tournament, press one if you think this is better. Press two if you think unlimited boost is better. Another time, by the way, that we've joined a lobby and it's exactly right on the score. Absolutely. Not lied to by the bracket for once. Oh, Harmux went for it. Beat Snicks to the punch. Snicks didn't have to worry too much because it has gone wide. 15 seconds left in the clock. We're in the quarter final now. Harmux needs a goal or he's going to be eliminated. And Snicks has got him at the wrong end of the field. He's really trying. And you know, credit to him. He's really giving it a go with all these long curve shots, long range curve shots. They are difficult to master, and he hasn't had enough time here to really. Give it a good go, GG, and Snix moves on. Not going to be hanging about too long at the end of these games. I want to get straight back into the bracket and catch the next one. I think, yeah, there was one more that was here. Diabolically, it's actually 22 month tier one. Welcome back to the stream, dude. Really appreciate it. All right, so it's Peyton versus Dayton. These guys are made for each other. And it looks like Peyton is made for the semi final. Because seconds after we join. He's just gone and scored the winning goal, hasn't he? And that is a very nice shot. He's managed to hit the ball in a straight line, in fact. Which is very rare. You don't often see a straight line shot in curveball, but or in curve boomer, but uh, I guess if you put enough topspin on it, you don't have any sight at all. Then it is possible. Do we have any games left in the previous round? No, we don't, because this is uh, Peyton's round. He had a 1-0. He had a very... Actually... <laughs> It says that he lost 3-2, so obviously that didn't happen. I know I never know what to what to believe uh, with the match history here. I'll, I'll turn off the chat in case you guys can't see. It just says that Peyton lost the game in round three when he actually won it. Uh, another another 3-2 in round one as well. A couple of really close games uh, for Peyton. But hey, one of this one of the semi-finals is already going. Let's get into this one. I think you're going to do more casting, producing for our LCS. How's it ah, that's going, not my decision, mate. We'll have to just wait and see what they, uh, what they decide. You know, if our LCS want to hire me again. Uh, Lee Daddy, triple three. Cheers to the 34 months. Tier one. Really appreciate it, man. Welcome back. What do you What do you think, Smithy? Should I do more uh, casting slash producing for our LCS? What you reckon? Is that a good fit? Oh, like, nobody, you'd never, none of you have ever seen me cast RLC. I've never done it. I've only done uh, interviews and I did a death segment once. Okay. That looks awkward. You know, Snicks, is, Snicks rather has hit the ball, but didn't get it too far away. And another little fake challenge from Bailey Mate has uh, got some space. Seems to be going for the high ball route. Just waiting for the miss on the back wall. There it is. And if you can put the open net in when it eventually comes, and this isn't a terrible strategy, just keep sending the ball high at the opponent's half and see if they're, what they're going to do with it. It's very difficult to make the right play with no boost on these uh, high ball clears. Am I going to play in any boom attorneys? I don't usually because if you, if you play in it, you can't, you know, spectate the rest. And every time I've asked my viewers, what do you want me to do, player spectate? It's a... Uh, usually the spectate that gets more votes, so I just do that because I don't really mind personally. But yeah, the, the day that you can actually spectate um, in a tournament that you've also played in before, you know, for me, get get round one and then actually spectate the rest of it, that could be pretty cool. But I don't think that's the thing. 
I mean, am I wrong? Is that actually a thing in the game, and I just don't know about it? I don't think it's. A, I, I don't think you can do that yet, can you? Um, two minutes left here. Snake's still down by one. Saw Bailey made on stream earlier, looking pretty clean. And again, so all your rolls for extra power on every single hit on the ball. Let's see if uh, you can keep it up. I'm sure Snix is going to give it a good go on this shot. This is a cracking opportunity. He's waited, really waited a long time though, hasn't he? And I think the opportunity has come and gone. Because he can't even catch up to the ball. But you don't have any boost. Really, mate. Has just caught it on the wrong side, but really no defense to be seen. And that's an open air miss for Bailey after Snix completely got out of position. Lots of backspin on this one. Bailey's got to be careful does get a good read on that. That was a down bounce and he's got in the way of it. Well played. Keep him uh, preaching to buddies at Sonics about it forever. They keep saying they're going to try and fix it. Fix it! Wait, is it supposed to be in the game but it's just not? Or as in they're going to try and make it in the game? That's actually going in. That's that's going in. Okay, yeah. Bailey had to make a touch there because it was going to spin in. It was still touching the wall. It was still rolling off the wall. He's under quite a lot of pressure here but has done enough. Never letting the ball get too close for comfort to the orange goal. That's not a bad effort, but Snix is going to have to watch and wait for another opportunity. It's gone over the bar again. 40 seconds left. This is the semi-final. Where is that ball going? That is a really, really bizarre bounce. It came off the sidewall, and now it's gone into the corner. 30 seconds left. Unfortunately for Snicks, the bounce really didn't help him out too much. But the fake challenge might. He's got himself at least one more possession play. But with no boost and an extremely bouncy ball, I don't see how he's going to get anything controlled started. He's just got to go for it here and hope that Bailey messes up. But Bailey's not going to mess up. He's going to beat him to the ball and put in a second goal for good measure. It's a really nice finish there by Bailey. He's using the double jump to put that one on target. Notice there he's just clipped the left side of the ball and didn't even have to dodge into it. Just a double jump was all it needed to send it flying on target. 2-0 will be enough unless we have a couple of kickoff goal dramas, which we won't. So Bailey, mate, goes into the final with 224 ping. Going to put in a third goal just to make sure uh, to keep his momentum going. Here, I'm going to go straight back to the bracket. I'm not uh, leaving to you know, get away from those lovely gents at all i want to just get into the other semi-final before it's over uh they're going to add it they asked for a whole list of things that would improve tourneys in game hopefully soon that and uh being able to ban people from your tournament who are just being rude or you know who are obviously cheating or smurfing or something like if you run a like this is why i don't do bronze only tournaments or silver only tournaments because it's, it's just all packed with people who aren't actually in that rank range it's got a bunch of people who are Pretending to be in that rank range. Oh, not bad pre flip attempt there by Peyton, but. Yeah, that, uh, you know, just being able to play attorney and then after you're out of it, spectate. And yeah, being able to kick people or even ban people. Like, if I could ban, like, you know, flag an account on Steam. Oh, Beanbag Bro's gone and done it. Hold that thought. What a finish by Beanbag Bro. We've seen a couple wall shots going clean over the bar today, but that one's just gone straight in the top corner. And Peyton is eliminated. He's able to win in his first match on stream. And the five before that, earlier in the tournament, our grand final today. It's going to be Beanbag Bro versus Bailey Mate. We've got two Bs. Uh, I'm going to have to wait and keep refreshing this. That actually makes me think of another thing that would be nice uh, for tournament mode, which is like being able to join games faster. I, I, I don't know, obviously there's probably something server side that makes this not possible, but this game may have already started, but we can't join it. Um, and that will go on for about a minute, and then we're probably going to join it in about 40 seconds in, even if I keep on looking for it ASAP. It'd be nice to be able to, to join tournaments faster, just as a quality of life thing. Don't miss any of the any of the goals. The only way, the only way I could think of that being completely foolproof is if like when we join this game we just watch it from the start as if it was a replay that's the only way I could think of making that work um, which would really only then apply to the final because I don't know because if you did this for every other game I guess you could watch this game from the start this one 
I mean, the rate at which it checks if he can join is slow, that's what causes the delay, so it's just not checking. That's what you think? Anyway, whatever the solution, it would be nice if you could get in quicker. We had to wait a while there, and that's pretty typical. And yeah, kick trolls. I want to be able to kick trolls from the tournament or ba ban them. Just block a block them from joining. It looks like there's been a goal here. Well, there's been two. Okay, 20 seconds gone. First to three wins. We're starting this one off at one all. Bailey, mate, has had some pretty keen air rolling and ball pressure. Whereas Beanbag Bro has relied on some clinical finishing and precise touches in the ball. Let's see which style comes out on top. There's Bailey, mate, with the same ball pressure that I'm referring to. He's keeping pulling it back. Beanbag Bro's going to be quite happy to save those kind of shots all day. Can't have been what. Billy Mate was intending when he hit that ball. Of course, he's got to make sure not to hit it too high, or else it's harmless and way over. But I would say too high is definitely better than just a roller across the ground straight at the goalkeeper. You can't get much worse than that, especially in a game like Harvey Boomer, where you, you want to get the ball up into the air so it can start spinning around. Oh, and Billy Mate shows us why here. Almost taking a 2-1 lead. Denied by the post. Bailey mate, you know, really wild attack on the ball there and despite the first shot here from Beanbag Bro not being very good, he's still got an open net which he's missed a second time, that is two in a row for Beanbag Bro, he's rushed the first shot and then completely missed the second one, this is much better though, pre-flip, doesn't make contact, it's gone wide, Bailey mate, bit lucky there to escape without conceding, he's sitting his goal though. Beanbag Bro still struggling. This wasn't his plan A on this ball. You know, plan B didn't end up too bad. It eventually capitulated, but that should have been a really good opportunity for him. And both players really, this has got to be the pressure of the grand final. They're choking here. Clean whiffs at either side of the field. These are guys who have actually played pretty well in the previous rounds, and we've watched a couple of them. Hey, Lee Daddy, thanks for the five gifted subs. Welcome to all the new subs. Uh, we've got a 16 month 3 sub for AJ Hockey, randomly gifted, wow. Actually, every single one of those subs is a random resub. Really? <laughs> Not one of those is brand new. That's crazy, you just gifted 5 resubs. All at once. Both players striking, really could use some improvements here. The beanbag Bro's under huge pressure, in fact he might have sent this one on his own target. A second touch as it falls right down on top of him. Beanbag Bro, trying to match. Bailey mates pressure and that's going to help him out a lot. Is that just gone in? It's going to spin into the goal off the corner wall. But you know credit to him, he's just stuck it in this awkward position. And we saw him make it into the grand final with a wall shot. Now it's not so much a wall shot, it's just a clear ball. He's just hitting it forward, just chipping it off the wall and seeing what's going to happen. But it seems like he's got it figured out. He knows how to get solid contact on the ball when it comes off the wall like that and this could be the game. Can Bailey May make it back in time? Can Beanbag Bro hit the target? He will hit the target! And Bailey Mate's out. Can't be happy with the ending result here. Got beat to the ball in the run up to this and had to watch helplessly as Beanbag Bro, the people's champion, has just knocked it in the bottom corner. I know we've been kicked from the lobby, that's a bit tournament cannot be fine. Wow, that was a very sudden ending there. <laughs> Eight months remembered out of two years. Is this a, thing? Is this a new thing well. as well? Do the tournaments just get deleted? Yeah, some good finishing there from Beanbag Bro. We saw some very keen uh, positioning on the ball for wall shots, wall hits, and yeah, a couple of good bottom corner shots as well towards the latter end of the tournament. Darth Squirtle 5. Thank you for the two-month prime. Or Darth Squirrels, I guess it could be. And uh, for Zara as well, thanks for the eight-month prime. Really appreciate the resubs, guys. Did you notice that tier 3? Uh, wait, well, there was a tier 3? Thanks for telling me, because I didn't. Oh, it was Doofy. Doofy. Something to the tier 3. I didn't even notice. Yeah, Doofy, aka Torbjorn. He's already he's got an 8 already. That's ninth one. Goodness me, that's many tier 3s. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the no boost uh, Carvey Boomer tournament. It's a pretty cool game mode. I really like that variation. I like the normal boost variation, and I like the no boost variation. 
Um, I like it a lot. Very, very interesting. But, uh... We're gonna have to try no boost, disable goal reset, I think. Or just normal boost, disable goal reset as well. What do you guys think? 